Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed. Got me a fresh new quarantine haircut, <laughs> beard trimmed, all of it. Man, I'm telling you what, it felt so good. I'll talk about that in a minute, though. Joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell. Shell, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling fantastic with my fresh cut. Are you? Then I look good. You do. It's like a whole new man. It's a whole new man. I'll tell you what, after, I don't think I had a haircut or a beard trim since, no, you trimmed it one time, kind of. Yeah. With scissors. As much as I could. But it's been since April, uh, February since I had a haircut. That's a long time for me. Yeah. I do not like it. I like to go back to my man cave salon in Olive Branch, Mississippi, and see Miss Jody, and she hooks it up with the clippers and the. the I I tell her I need the full detail. It, it's a uh, hair, eyebrows, ear hair, whatever you got, <laughs> beard. You have- she washes it out and puts a hot towel treatment on you, and then she styles it up and puts a little beard oil on you. Man, it's the. It's the worst. It's it's the only thing better is when you schedule the fresh razor blade shave there, and I hadn't done one of those in a long time yeah. because I've had the beard, you know. But the, I used to go get the full hot lather with the straight razor blade. There's Does nothing that not better make than that. You nervous. The first couple times it did because you think there's this, you know, there's this woman that you don't really know. <laughs> Got you lean way back in this chair <laughs> and got this six inch razor blade. It seems like going at you, but. It's, it's, if you've never had a straight razor shave, I re- highly recommend it. It was like it's a, old school. <laughs> Bef- the day before you went, I told you you look like a werewolf. You know, like mid change. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the movies, they'll slowly make you change. <laughs> the mid morph. Yeah, you were a werewolf mid morph. Yeah, um, I'm tightened up now. It does make you feel better. Get a haircut. Oh yeah, it does. I'm in the sunshine, eighty degrees. Covered. Yeah, well, you don't have that problem, but I just let them rock. He just, yeah, yeah I ain't that trying was to. Gross. Yeah, I'm not covering anything. I'm not. But now it's like a whole new man. It's a whole new man. New man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's going to be crazy uh, in the video? So we didn't do a delicious dinner this week. Yeah. But we have been busy. We've re- recorded three like recipe videos. I guess we call well, them. We've recorded two. We're about to go yeah. and record the, the third, third one. Yeah. yeah. But the first one I did, and we released it this week, yeah. was the herb crusted beef tenderloin. You want to talk about that one first? Yeah, let's jump in. Man. Uh, herb crusted beef tenderloin. We released it Thursday. Thursday. So story behind this was I didn't know what I was going to do, but I went to Super Low because I've you know I can't stand not going to the stores, and it was mm-hmm. Mother's Day weekend. And I wanted to get my mom a whole ribeye for Mother's Day. She loves ribeye steaks. Who who doesn't like a whole ribeye? And I was looking through the store, and I know this whole thing's going crazy with beef prices. And, you know, you're seeing some places they don't have anything. Well, Super Low was jam-packed full of meat. And I went, like, early in the morning, and they had whole Pismo certified Angus beef tenderloin, beef tenderloins in the bag. And it was, like, what, $63, I think? it was. It wasn't, oh, wow, really? It was dirt cheap yeah. for me for a whole beef tenderloin. I'm used to paying, you know, about... Eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine a pound for them sometimes, and so I, I got I grabbed that. I got the I had the guy bring me the certified Angus beef uh, whole ribeye out of the back because they oh, don't so they don't keep those. Yeah, I went ahead and spent that, the money yeah. and bought that. I could have got the regular, but I you know it's Mother's Day, and then I strolled down the meat counter because it was packed and I was looking, and there sits a certified Angus beef brisket that was just thick all the way across, and I said I'm getting that too. And I had no idea that I was going to do the videos with them until I got back home and told you. And he's like, well, let's shoot some videos. We'll, you know, we're not going to release them all the same week. We'll put them on deck. And so the first one up. Well, my plan was we were going to work hard this week and. Take a little time off. Take a little time off I next week. I like your week. plan. I like your plan. Just a day to get in the pool and not cook. Yeah. Well, we're, that's happening. So beer. this week I decided to do the beef tenderloin. And I was, you know. Here was my thing. I was going to do um, herb crusted beef tenderloin. Take that whole Pismo tenderloin out of the package. Break it down. You know, take the chain off. I saved. I saved all my trimmings because I plan on doing probably a delicious dinner with that sometime. We yeah, vacuum I, sealed them and froze them. Yeah, but I trimmed it up into uh, cubes. Yeah, what, what's your plan with that? I'm going to do some kind of stir fry, kind of beef and broccoli or something like that. I think to yeah. go with it. I think that'll be really like good. A one pot type deal. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't know if it'll Ooh, be a maybe noodley. 
I don't know if it'll be necessarily something I do on the grill. It'll probably be bring out the big wok pan or something. Yeah, yeah. Or something. I don't know. I hadn't got that far with it, but I saved it. You vacuum sealed it for me. It's in the freezer. But it left me with that center cut of the beef tenderloin, the, oh. the Chateaubriand. However you say that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not French. But that's the center cut <laughs> piece of beef. You do have a good evil French laugh. <laughs> <I'll tell you>. <laughs> <But> uh, <laughs> how did you learn to trim a beef tenderloin like that? Because uh, it looked like you knew what you were doing. Pra- practice. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, cooked, I, I cooked whole beef tenderloins. For the holidays, a lot. Yeah. I mean, people love them. You can throw them out on a on a big wood cutting board. I do a pork tenderloin and the beef tenderloins, slice them, and they're beautiful. Yeah. I mean, they're awesome. I do it a lot. Um, so I've kind of got the hang of it down, but it's not hard to do. It can be, um, I guess it can be a little daunting at first because you think you've just spent all this money on this piece of beef and you don't want to mess it up. But your hands actually do a lot yeah. of it. Yeah, it's, it, like, it's ready to... To break down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all I do is I it's take my hands and kind of separate it out like kind of get the chain over to the side and kind of peel it back and then you kind of there's always a little bit of that extra uh membrane that they leave on it usually when it's you know you buy the bag pismo cut yeah and so you can take your fingers and work underneath that and strip it back and you might have to cut off the, t- the little l where it's finally attached on the end but once you get it exposed you can work your hands down the chain and you can work them you know in between it and separate that chain piece, which is the chain is it's got some lean meat in it, but it's a lot of fat and a lot of connective tissue. It's over on the side. And so once I get that pulled off and use the knife to kind of break it off at the end a little bit, the 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 whole beef tenderloin kind of folds at one end. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of work your hands along that fold, straighten it out, and you can cut that piece off with your knife and it leaves you um, you know, with with some nice chunks of beef. You could actually cut those into some steaks. Yeah. If you wanted to. Some restaurants try to pass that end piece off as a filet and it's not a true filet mignon. Um, you know, it's better to use it for grind or stir fry or something like that. Yeah. Um, but we had talked about throwing it on the cooker and just cooking it for, yeah, some, cooking it for lunch. That yeah. Day. Yeah. Just from old chef meat or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cook meat. But, uh, sometimes those are the best pieces, but what you really want is that, that it is. Yeah. You really want that center cut piece. That's where they get the really nice filet mignons from. And that's why they're so expensive because you do have a lot of that extra excess waste on a beef tenderloin to get those few flavor, mm-hmm. perfect filet mignons you get out of it. But for this recipe, I kept it whole. Yeah. The center cut piece of beef tenderloin, I put a little olive oil on it, and I made up a little herb mixture with with well, another French seasoning, herbs de Provence. Yeah. And why, it's why did you do the herb? Why did you go with an herb crusted? I just thought it would be good on beef. I like it on beef, yeah. and I and I knew I was going to make this creamy dill horseradish sauce. So it kind of goes with it. And the herbs, um, you know, beef tenderloin is really, really neutral. It's super soft. It doesn't have a lot of fat in it, but it's a really soft beef. And when you cook it perfect, the texture of it's almost silky. It kind of melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And so the herbs are where you're getting the flavor from. The salt, the black pepper, that whole crust on it is the flavor. Because the beef part's kind of neutral. It doesn't have a ton of flavor. But by the time we cook it on the grill slow with the twos on fire and put some smoke on it the beef tenderloin soaks up some of the smoke so you get that you know you get that infused smoke flavor and then it's got the herb notes and then it's got the saltiness and a little bit of the pepper spice and then smooth it out with the sauce that i served it with it was just exquisite it was it It was was, it was you didn't Um, want to quit eating it and it was so good it really was it melted in your mouth so what if you didn't have the herbs to prevent what, what um, something you... So you can mix up some herbs. You could just use whatever herbs you yeah, like. Yeah, so herbs herbs to prevent is a seasoning they use in a lot of French cooking, and it's dried herbs that they make kind of like a rub with. It's just a blend. Yeah. It could have all kinds of stuff. It's got a lot of Yeah, it's got a lot of You looked up herbs. just the, the familiar... You know, we, we've had, I think... Uh, we've we use had it on that, chicken a lot. Yeah, it's really good on chicken. It's really good on pork. Yeah. It's great on beef, but um, it's got rosemary, thyme, parsley a uh, little oregano i think it had sage it might have had some dill in it i mean it's got a lot of stuff fennel it's you it's know it's excellent on chicken we use it a really lot good, on chicken, really good like whole chickens. yeah but but it's good trust me it's good on beef tenderloin yeah and so i used olive oil to kind of bind that to it let it come up to room temp got it in that two zone fire i used my pk 360 i had a um a little coal basket that somebody had sent me and i couldn't i can't remember did you ever look it up no i need to look it up because we somebody sent that to us like a year ago, maybe. And I never got around to using yeah. it. Yeah. But I'm telling you what, it worked 
perfect. It did. It held one chimney of charcoal, and those coals lasted so long, you know, in there. It was the perfect setup for two zoning on the 360. Yeah, it really was. So, and then I, you know, I used my little hinge lid on that side so I That's could raise it up. That's not a PK manufacturer. No, no, no. Thing. It's a steel little charcoal yeah, tray. Somebody made that themselves. I've, I've got to go back and see if you can find the email where somebody said they wanted to send that to me because I got to give them some credit. You, and yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I know people are going to ask. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it's a perfect little charcoal tray for, yeah. for a PK. It, it fit worked. in there. It was even notched out to where it fit the grooves right in the mold of the PK360, how it's kind of, you know, got the aluminum mold on the, to the inside of it. Yeah, somebody it fit, it, somebody, that Yeah, well. yeah they, they, they spec that out and made it just right. Yeah. Because it fit snug, held the, held the charcoal perfect, and then you had such a wide zone for, you know, um, kind of that offset two zone cooking. Yeah, and it, it held the... Like, oh, it held temp perfect. Yeah, and it held the chimney, a full chimney. Held too. a full chimney. You, you could just see. Just right, yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was really good. I'll be using that some more for that setup. I love because, how the 360 cooked with that. Oh yeah, the, the beef. Yeah, 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 it worked. It worked perfect. I've done, you know, I've done it before on some stuff, and it, it just. But this char- charcoal basket seemed to make a big difference. Yeah, I got to do some more. I'm gonna do a butt on it. Why not? Yeah, uh, with right. the hinges, I could take that hinge part of that lid off and just add some more coals as needed. Mm-hmm. Keep adding more wood and oh, the that's butt a good down idea. there. Just take the hinge off completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 360 butt. That's something I hadn't done. Yeah, you have. I don't, you know, mainly I use that grill for grilling. Yes. And I do do some, a little bit of two zone okay, stuff with it. But, uh, <laughs> you yeah, use I mean, for grilling. well, because I got all these other smokers and it's not, can you smoke on it? Yeah. But it's not, you know, if I'm doing a super a long cook, it. it's not my, it's not my go to when I got all these other options, mm-hmm. you know? And so, but it took about 40 minutes. I was going to ask, what was the total, total cook time? It was about 40 minutes. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. 40, 45, but something like that. But don't go by times. No. And if you'll notice, I had the dial. I take the dial out of my 360 because I didn't like the way it, the the probe length of, of the thermometer it came with seemed to stick in meat when I would put meat down there. So I was like, man, screw this. I don't need it. So I don't even know I lost it. <laughs> and so I don't, <laughs> I don't have it anymore. And I just got a hole there, but it, it's, it's not drawing too much air. I um, asked you. Uh, what what tips that 360 you were like i don't know that's, 350. <laughs> that's probably what it is it should be <laughs> i didn't care but what did i say though it's not about I, not about I, that i know about what the temp and the grill is i'm more concerned with the internals as yeah told me. and that's right with an expensive cut of beef like beef tenderloin i'm worried about what my dot says the internal temperature is of that piece of meat because i can watch it coming up slow i knew that in 20 minutes if i was cooking around 350 that the internal was going to be somewhere around 100, 105, and it, it was 106. Yeah. When we showed it on, you know, after about 20 minutes. And then in another 20 minutes, I was hitting that 120 and it was creeping over. And so when it got to 125, I pulled it. And that's perfect for me. If you like it more rare, get it off when it gets 120. If you want it, um, you know, if you want it a little past, a little medium, what's, what's take it off at 130. You would recommend someone go. Well, I wouldn't take it any further than 130. 130, 131, like we do a. SCA steak. Yeah. Yeah. Because that you're ruining that piece of beef if you take it past that. Because once it gets over medium, like medium well, man, you've dried it out and it's just bland meat. I mean, it's not, it's not even, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. If I want to eat it that way. It's bad in the place. So you got to, that's right. You got to take it. You might as well eat something else less expensive if you're going to cook it that far. I mean, that's me. That's my, you know, take that for what you will. If you just absolutely want to eat filet and you like it. You know, dried out. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I to judge? I'm just telling you the you way like dry I like brown do it. shoe yeah. leather. <laughs> if they sent me a, a medium well fillet or a piece of tenderloin that I've ordered, I'm sending it back. Because it better, it better still have some juice and, and, and some pink. Yeah, no kidding. A lot. I thought you had a perfect cook on yeah, it. Well, it was, it was, and I think the rest has a lot to do with that. It lets it calm down. I brought it up slow. I kept all that juice inside it by letting it sit there 15 minutes on the cutting board, covered in foil. And so it just, it was, it was easy. I, I, I mean, that was a quick video. It was. It took me longer, I don't know, to set up the grill. It really didn't take Trim. long to do anything. Clean out the grill, maybe. Yeah. And you helped do that. Trim. Trim wasn't nothing to it. Yeah. I mean, it was easy. That was a super simple recipe where and folks will think you are. A master. Uh, yeah, a master. <laughs> by, by serving them something like that. And it's so easy to do. And that's why I do it at holidays. I know I'm not going to mess it up. I do it mainly on the, on the pellet grill. And put my probe in it and watch it and take it off. And there's nothing to it, man. People are like, man, blowed away by yeah, this. Yeah. How did you cook this? It's 
the best tasting beef tenderloin I've ever had. And I was like, well, you know, it's hard. I mean, <laughs> you got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you're doing on that one. It takes, you really got to be a pro. You got to have a YouTube channel to do that. <laughs> I was like, nope, you just put it on there and don't mess with it. Watch the internal. Um, so how long could you let it rest? Or how um, long have you let it rest before? In the the longest I've ever went, I've like wrapped it up. Took it off just a hair earlier and wrapped it up and when stuck it in a dry earlier, cooler. You mean like 120? 120, 122. And then wrapped it up tight and stuck it in a dry cooler. For, full? Yeah. And I've left it in there for two or three hours before because we had, we're going somewhere or it was going to, you know, I got it done and didn't have time to cook it right up to. Yeah. And that, that, man, it's, I guarantee you there's a piece or two left in the refrigerator. It's still good. Oh, no. One of my favorite things at the holidays is, uh, Pulling out a piece of leftover tenderloin, putting it with like one of the homemade yeast rolls yeah. and a smear of uh, horseradish sauce on top. And that's a good little lunch. Heck yeah. Leftovers. That's how I like to eat it. Yeah. And that's what, you know. No heating it. Oh yeah, just cold. cold it's just like roast beef. You know, yeah, it really yeah. is. Of course, at the holidays, we cut it a little thinner. Yeah. You know, because we're serving people. So. And usually, I, my favorite way to serve it is, thin, is thinner sliced on rolls. Yeah. Because it's like. Not a set down meal type food. Well, a lot of times we're doing that. We got a big crowd, or you know, and exactly. people are kind of walking around with their plates. And so, if you slice it thinner and serve it with a roll with your sauces, it's easier to eat. If I'm serving it for a sit down dinner, I'm cutting it thick like I did, yeah. like one inch thick. And you usually probably get two servings. A man is going to eat two two pieces. Oh of yeah, it. And, yeah. You know, a woman might only want one, but it was it was exquisite. That's sexist. Well, they just don't eat as much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know if I offended anyone, you know. I didn't mean to offend nobody. Their appetite. If I was planning, I would plan yes. for women to eat half the portion than a man to eat. It might be sexist. They're going to eat double the salad portion. So. <laughs> that's your, that's yeah, your that's logic. Make it up. Mo, no, it's probably more double the wine portion. <laughs> that's just... Let's get off that. The women you know. Just the women. I just know some <laughs> wine drinking women. <laughs> uh, so you served it with a kind of a different horseradish sauce than what we've served it in the past. Yeah. This is something new that you've done. The one you like to make, and we started out making, was more of a creamy mayo-based one. It was. Yeah. No sour cream. And it's less horseradish. Yeah. So it's it's more... Along the line of that uh, creamy horseradish mayo or yes, something like that. It is. Well, I wanted to do kind of a, a, a tra it's not a traditional, but the hor the thick ho prepared horseradish where, sauce that you would get with like more, prime rib. And it's more prominently horseradish. Yeah, yeah. It's stronger horseradish flavor, so it's got a little more bite. Yeah. The dill kind of goes with it. I think dill goes great with the horseradish it and does. the beef. And then it's sour cream based with just a little mayo. You know, a little lemon juice yeah. and salt and pepper. It's really easy, really so easy. So it doesn't have the tangy elements as much. It has more of a, I don't know, would you say sharper? Kind of, you know how yogurt or sour cream's kind of got a sharp or sharper? Yeah. Like mayo is kind of smooth, you know? Yeah, and it's it's creamier to yeah. me than a. This than has a, more of a bite. It does. It does it go, it, and it goes really good with the horseradish. And we, um with the creamier horseradish sauce, I also put hot sauce in it. Yeah. So it's almost. I wouldn't say it's orange, but it's changes. It's not tint. white. Yeah. 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 I like both. I mean, both are really good, yeah. but I was just doing something different. And since we have the herb garden, it's got some dill in it. And I was like, well, we'll just use some dill out of our herb garden. We could have used the herb garden for all the herbs. Yeah. And, you know, you could use fresh herbs for that herb roasted, cr that crust, but it takes a lot more of a fresh herb. And then it doesn't, they don't, they cook on, but to me, it doesn't crust up as good as yeah. the dried herb does in that case. And you could, I could have. If I would have tied it up, and you could have tied it up just to keep a more round See, shape. I've seen you tie it up before. Yeah, I didn't think I needed to. This yeah. one trimmed out so nice. It, you know, sometimes you get them and they're odd shaped. They don't want to sit perfect. But this one just kind of sat there perfectly shaped, and I had it even all the way down. So I was like, hey, I don't need to tie this one. Yeah. But if I was going to tie it, I probably would have stuck some herbs in there, you know, longer herbs, and then yeah. kind of gave it. Like you've a little done bit like I did a prime rib, rib one time. Yeah. yeah. Just for a presentation. But, and then, you know, if you want to tie it up, tie it up. So could you have um, cooked a pork loin similar? Yes. And it'd be very method. good. 
pork loin, pork tender, those little pork tenderloins would be mm-hmm. good like that. You could use the exact same Seasonings. recipe. You know, I wouldn't, I don't really serve pork with the horseradish. Yeah. Um, I'd probably change that up to more. We do a, a fruity or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good around holidays. It's like a cram. It's like a homemade cranberry sauce kind of. Super easy. But yeah, and people think that that's what, real fancy. What I typically what I like to serve with the with the pork is like a mustard base, like a honey mustard based sauce. You yeah. Could probably, you know, I've never tried to do a creamy mustard horseradish, but that might I go. Bet that would be good. I could see that mustard being good goes on good with the pork. Yeah. And not so much with the beef. Or it's, I mean, that not that kind of what a um, stone ground mustard is? It has a little horseradish. It kind of, it. it's kind of. I don't. I mean, it, it, it doesn't have, have any in it, but it's got it's that got bite. That, yeah. Yeah. They do make a horseradish mustard. I've got. Yeah. A, I've got one. It's like a German one. I've got. Yeah, it's in a little yeah, squeeze yeah. bottle. It's stout. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but a little goes a long way. So as soon as we got done with wrap that video we don't want to talk too much about the brisket video because we'll talk about yeah. it next week we did the certified angus beef brisket video yes and i'm not going to talk about what we did because we'll do that when we release how, it how long did it take you to cook that brisket that's probably the so i did a slow and slow brisket on a pellet grill that was the premise to get the you were trying to get the smoke flavor and the bark yeah on a pellet longest grill. piece of meat i've ever cooked on a pellet grill <laughs> it was it was going on it was well over 16 hours <laughs> I put it on at night, cooked all night, wrapped the next morning, and and then took pretty much most of the day, another yeah. eight hours or so. So we'll talk about that later and show you how it did. But it it turned out phenomenal. It was really it good. Was, I was like, I was when I, you know, because I've cooked briskets on pellet grills. I got videos on them, and they turn out good. Is it as good as Jolene, or is it as good as my old hickory? No, my, most of the time, but. And I knew that when I was going to unwrap this and try it. But when I unwrap this brisket, and you'll see it in the video, and I sliced it, I was like, holy crap. This is the best pellet brisket I have ever cooked, and I hadn't even tried it. And then when I did, it was. I was like, man, this is giving them a run for the money here. I wouldn't be scared to turn to go to bat with a brisket like that in a daggum contest. With a little tweaking, I think I could have put it over tweaking. the top. Because yeah. I didn't do, you talk about simple, I and mean, it was nothing to it. It was very good. Yeah. It was very, very good. Um, how, how many? How much pellets did you burn? <laughs> Man, surprisingly, <laughs> not much at all. I would bet not even half a bag at all. I, I loaded the pellet grill up. Now, this the Timberline I have don't use pellets. I don't know how it – I guess it's so well insulated or so efficient. But just that night, it dropped down maybe an inch or two. And I showed you mm-hmm. – and I still had what I, you know, left of a bag that I'd poured in there and topped it off. And then the next day in the afternoon, I looked and it had finally gotten down to about the, where you can see the screen, you know, the little round screen and whole perforated screen. Yep. And so it, that's not much pellets at all. So you burned, a, let a pellet grill run for about 24 hours, 28 no, hours? Probably 17, <laughs> 17 hours, I would 17 say. 17 hours. 17. And because did not I was, even get close to burning a bag? No. That, <laughs> that would be something good to see how long a bag, a how full it, hopper of pellets on that timber line would it take. It? But see, you got to think, I was running that pellet grill so low for half That's the time. True. It was running at, at 195, and then the rest of the time it was running at yep. 250. So, And I never opened it. So Yeah. We'll talk about that after we yeah. release that video. Or you get to edit it. If if the video didn't turn out good, <laughs> <laughs> if we, we don't, might not talk about. If it. we never mention it again, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the brisket was fire. I don't know. How the, I don't. I don't know. Have how. you eaten it cold? Yeah, I've, I've been eating on it for two days. <laughs> I've have. I really have. It's so good. I got a piece of white bread, a couple of dill pickles, just one yeah. little schmear of mayonnaise. Yeah, you know like, I made a some half of that, sandwich. Uh, there's still some of that creamy dill horseradish in there. That's what oh, I've been yeah. putting. <laughs> I'll warm it up in the microwave, just like. Put a damp pepper towel over it for like one minute and get it good and hot and sizzling. And then I'll put it on some bread with some of that creamy dill man mm-hmm. or horseradish. Oh man, it's good. Speaking of which, we need some bread. Yeah, we gotta <laughs> go to the stove. But okay, so we did the beef tenderloin. Yes. We did the brisket. Yeah. And now this week we've got a whole hog. We're fixing to go. We're fixing like, to leave, leave here, here and go. go prep and cook 
a racing style hog on my with, old Hickory EDX with some help. With some help, I'm not you know hog cooking. It's more of the journey of cooking the hog and the experience with people <laughs> than it journey. is just hanging out by yourself and making it's a video. The journey. We're fixing to. I got a couple bottles of bourbon, different kinds. I went to the liquor store yesterday while Michael was getting his hair cut. Oh, did you? Right beside it, yeah. Because we don't have any. Saw the ice lady from Memphis and May. She's running that. She runs that liquor store. So I talked to her about you know the Memphis and May situation. She's oh, not. What'd she say? It's going down. She said it's going to definitely happen in October. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely happened. She's not excited because she won't sell ice. She said, ice don't melt much in yeah. that time of year. <laughs> hey, right ice. this weekend, it'd be rocking today. Yeah. She'd be trucking. It's, 80, it's going to be 87 degrees. Who knows what it's going to be in October. But, yeah, no. <laughs> That's so, a good point. I didn't think she about. told me that Music Fest, and I didn't really think about this, but they scheduled Music Fest after. I so like that. I love that. The park won't be destroyed. And she told me, I don't know if this is fact, but – you know, they were going to do this big renovation with Tom Lee Park yep. and Memphis and May was going to have to move. Since all this has come down, evidently they've come to terms, so they're going to work around and Memphis and May will never move. Okay. And it's it's not even going to move one year. They're, they're redoing the design, I guess. This hasn't been released as far as I know. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah. I'm just going by hearsay from what the lady at the... And I'm sure at my local package store beside my hair <laughs> well, hairstylist. Those are the two best that's, places that's to get, where you gossip. get gossip. Where do you get your news from, right? <laughs> <laughs> hairstylist and liquor store. That's, if they don't know what's going on there in the community, nobody does. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's where I get my best gossip. Yeah. So I'm excited about this hog. We're going to do a racing style hog yeah. um, on it, the on the old hickory pit. It's kind and, of our Memorial Day recipe. Yeah. And I'm, you know, this is going to be more about how to do, not a, you know, I've done the belly up hogs mm -hmm. where it's not as pretty. It's laying there all splayed open, but this one I'm going to try to keep pretty. And then I'm going to show you how to display it. Like if you're doing a, if you're doing a, a hog for an event or something, this will make a pretty hog. You can set it out on the table and you can, you can take the skin and cut it and fold it down from the backside and pull the meat out and then bring it back around and arrange it around the hog and kind of garnish it we're not going to go heavy or crazy on the garnish but i want it to look cool and i got mark and jamie from swine life going to hang out with me this weekend and cook it yeah so i hope, I hope it turns out good it right now yeah they've got the hog he's they're driving him around in the back of the cooler <laughs> in the back of the truck <laughs> <laughs> they should be on the way to the house hopefully so um but i got the hog from tk at raymond's meat market and so i had to give him a shout out i told him i would mention that i got it from him definitely um and so i'm excited yeah um, so we'll talk about the hog and how that went and everything on our podcast next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's going to go. I hope it's going to go. If we never talk about the hog again. <laughs> it didn't turn out. <laughs> that's kind of where we go. If we mentioned something we didn't talk about, it didn't turn out. Don't ask. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm still working on it. <laughs> My show, I can do that. <laughs> I don't answer to nobody. <laughs> okay. So what else are we talking about today? Well... Show? What do you got lined up? Anything important? Meat shortage. Man, you know, this is scaring me. It's scaring me a I little think, too. I mean, you know, from what? Well, for one, Sonic <laughs> will not let you get a double cheeseburger. It's getting serious. <laughs> you can get two regular That's why it don't make any, any dead gum sense to me. So you mean to tell me that you won't sell a double cheeseburger, but you can order two number ones, and they'll finally sell you two number ones. I mean, you know, if I was going to do that, why not just charge me for two number ones and make me a dead double with it? You know what I mean? I'm cool with that, but if you want to get a if you want to get a double cheeseburger at Sonic, you got to double it up yourself. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's really getting serious. I mean, what the so deal is? There's no it. there's no shortage from the farmer from the producer side. There's no shortage. It, it's just yeah. a, a link in the it, it's, chain. Yeah, there's a big kink because of the because of the COVID. Um, it's got, you know, the processors is where the hangup is yeah. the, the, they're having multiple outbreaks of their employees testing positive for this virus. And then, then you've got employees that don't want to come to work because they're scared of it, yeah. you know? And so it has put a damper on the whole uh, supply chain Yeah, and they're seeing it not only in food service, uh, you know, fast food restaurants or wherever we're seeing it in the dead gum grocery stores Yeah, and that's causing Price gouging. You're seeing crazy prices for, you know, brisket, for People. ground beef. I saw someone said they 
They were selling uh, ground beef at the seventy nine dollars for ten pounds. That's seven ninety nine a pound for ground beef. Oh my god! Just regular old eighty twenty ground chuck chub, ten pound chub. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. So you know, the, we're not through this yet, and they're they're saying possibly six weeks. So you know, I'm not saying run out and buy your meat, but I'm saying be prepared if you're going to try to get some, that you're going to pay more for it. Uh, and then some places aren't seeing it at all. But what I what I do realize what is like what places are not seeing it at all. Well, some like I went super low. I guess they have a local supply on stuff uh, and it hadn't hit them yet. Yeah. Now I don't know if it has yet. This was last week. It's it's changed. I hadn't. You know, it's not like I get to go to the yeah, store I as much it's as I want to. Day to day. But but what I am seeing is uh, if you can find local producers, they're not having as big an issue. Like Kevin, uh, uh, for instance, kept the butcher shop. Kevin uh, that I go to, Kevin Green down in, Pan- in uh, Panama City. Yeah. No. Pensacola. Yeah. Um, he he kind of saw this coming and he's been adamant the whole time this whole that he's you know, he's not raising his prices up unless he absolutely yeah, has to. But he's there. he's prepared and he said he's got three or four weeks worth of product built up in his freezers that he can work off of to keep to hopefully meet his demand, to keep the prices low and not to have to go up on people. And so you've got other places like that. I know we've got the butcher's block, Brad here in town. He's doing the best he can, TK up there at Raymond's. Um, we've got some of these local farms, uh, yeah. you know, in the area. And so that's where you want to go to. You want to go to these places that are supplying food locally and buy from them because a lot of times they're going producer processing themselves and right out to retail. And so you're going to get a better product not, a lot of times. Yeah. They're not in that supply chain where they're depending on these these large, uh, you know, meat processors to do their product. And, you know, it's supporting your local economy. So I'm all for that. If I can buy from the small, you know, the smaller business, yeah, I'm really happy about it. So. And maybe you know, it it's gonna suck short term, but maybe long term it might be better because it will allow you to, yeah, it, it will. I mean, that's true. Improve, you know, the relationship that local people have with their local meat producers. Yeah, the, the worst part of it to me is not that we just can't get it at you know Walmart or Kroger. It's that these these farmers are having to. I know they're just, just sitting on this. Kill, you, a lot of times you can't sit on it. Yeah. I mean, it's costing them big time. They're having to kill off a lot of stuff. We're seeing chickens, pigs, cows. You know, they're just having just to dispose waiting. of them yeah. because, I mean, they're not getting anything for them, and the feedlots are full. The processors aren't taking anything, and, you know, they're, it's costing them more just to try to hold them. Oh, yeah, that'll kill them. a yeah. farm. Oh, yeah, it'll kill a farm. Yeah. So we haven't seen – we haven't even seen – begin to see the damage that's going to cause yet. So uh, I know it's scary stuff, man. I don't, you know, I don't try to get too political, but <laughs> – Start messing with my meat, <laughs> we're gonna have problems. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we got, yeah, all of a sudden, we got to get the signs out and <laughs> we got to make phone calls and send emails. Because, <laughs> well, we do have a pretty, how can I barbecue? It ain't how to, how to barbecue vegetables, right? What am I gonna switch? That's what I wrote down. I said, Did do you? you have any good vegetarian recipes? I, I don't, I mean. <laughs> I guess I might have to come up with some. <laughs> You've got that one. I've got some vegetables I cook. I don't know if you got. <laughs> I won't be happy about it. I won't be near as cheerful if I had to get on there and do some vegetable videos. Well, I'll be slamming stuff around, talking with my teeth tight. And probably a whiskey drink right there, too. Today. Maybe I'll lose some weight there. I'll be happy. <laughs> today it's mushroom cap. <laughs> yeah, it's a mushroom day. <laughs> That you do have hungry. a good recipe for a mushroom. I've got cap. some decent, but I do have some decent vegetables. It's really recipes good. that aren't just or all meat. It's not like tofu. Yeah, uh, we're not doing. We're not. We're not that desperate yet. Yeah. What if they're you know gearing us all up for this whole? What's the fake beef called that they're pushing? Uh, I know what you're talking. I refuse about. to eat it. But the one that Burger King Impossible. Yeah, the Impossible or? Whopper stuff. Ugh. Not a burger. Ugh. Maybe that's a, a new, new chain we're gonna see. Not a burger. Well, we got a freezer freezer full of meat. The problem is most of it's deer meat, and that's not a problem to yeah. me. We're fixing to go into heavy deer overload, and we'll okay. go get some more if it comes down to it. By getting this do recipes with, yeah, we're gonna start fishing and we're gonna start hunting. And we're <laughs> <laughs> There's not gonna be a lack. It just might not come from a store. You know, people we do. Are, People are still going to want to cook and eat, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm having severe technical difficulties with my headset thing. It's wanting to come unplugged. Um, I have to get on Amazon, stimulate some Bezos pocket, I guess. I got to order something. So, 
enough about the meat shortage. Yeah, enough about the meat shortage. That's I, it. Really depresses me, Shell. I was in such a good mood with my haircut and beard trim and everything. Yeah. Well, now let's talk about summer barbecues. Hey, it's about that time. It is, it that, is that time. time. It is that time. Memorial Day weekend is next weekend. It's not next weekend, is it? Yeah. No way. We're in yes. April, right? That's why we're doing this hog video yeah. now. Dead gummit. I didn't know May. That's May. To me, I think Memorial there's, Day. I think May's over, and we're into June. There's one more weekend in May. And then it's after Memorial. Okay. Okay. Oh, so that, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. I'm lost. It's like, I'm lost. It's like Groundhog Everybody Day on the lost. calendar. I don't know what day it is. I don't know, you know, I know we're in May. It's supposed to be, what's, I should be down at Memphis in May right now. Oh, yeah. I would what's be, today? Thursday? I would be probably turning in sauce or hot wings yeah. or something right now. It's almost time. They'd be they'd be on the grill. Yeah, it, the booth would be decorated, and it'd be, it'd be getting We'd ready be, for lunch. Yeah. Thursday lunch. I mean, that'd be a big. You know, that's a big time for people to come out. Heck yeah! I mean, Memphis not doing Memphis in May is really throwing it off. Yeah, <laughs> but so we're rolling into Memorial Day barbecue. What the so people, I'm talking about summer barbecues. Yeah, barbecue season where you invite your friends over. Throw some ribs on the grill. Yeah. You got your chickens, barbecue chicken and ribs. When Let I think of summer barbecue, that's sprinklers. usually, I think, you know, come, what comes to my mind? Kids playing, men sitting around, having a few cold ones. Cooking. Grills full of ribs, barbecue chicken quarters, you know. Yeah. That's, that's what, summertime that's grilling to me. About. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's summertime grilling to me. When Women I- working on their tans. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking their fruity little drinks. This is like your ideal. <laughs> that's my utop- summer utopia. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I think of. But this tomatoes, year, tomato sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to that. And this, watermelon. I put watermelon. On corn. Corn, corn on the grill. Yeah. yeah. This year might. I'm down with all that. We're gonna have a lot of it this summer, right? Yeah. I mean, we don't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Summertime uh, barbecue. Like this year it. might look a little different. Yeah, there'll be social, distancing, I guess. Social distancing and a lack of meat. Yeah, we'll come up with something. I mean, I think it's going to be a lot of deer burgers. We can do that. Uh, you think there's going to be, like, you can't find hot dogs? I have no <laughs> idea. I don't know. Surely. I haven't looked. As soon as we get through with this, before I go cook a hog, I'm going to the store. See what they got. <laughs> Just I might buy another deep freeze. You keep telling me to quit buying meat. <laughs> <laughs> We run out of space. That we do. You do need a new de- deep freeze. But let's call it grilling and chilling. Grilling and chilling for the summer. I like it. Okay. Or pool- I love chilling. Or pooling and partying. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I'm not so happy about pooling and partying. Uh, <clears throat> but I like grilling and chilling. Okay. Well, what do you need to grill and chill? I need a grill. <laughs> Got check cooler check ice check beverages check nice chair check and then meat that's the question mark <laughs> but we're gonna come up with something hey there's no beer shortage <laughs> in, here. in mexico <laughs> and you, you we saw that now imagine this the government uh what did they stop the production yes, of because they, they said it was to, it was causing too many cases in the breweries i guess of COVID or they something? They decided that beer was non-essential. They, oh, oh, really? What? Yeah. I beg to differ. That's the article that I yeah. had said. So, beer's non-essential. They've drank, Mexico's running low on beer. People are crossing the border <laughs> to buy beer and take it back, and then cross back. <laughs> Isn't that crazy and wild? Going to think Texas. About it. Yeah. Buy beer and take it back to Do you think they're taking Lone Star back? I would. If I was close enough, man, I'd be loaded up. Lone Star Light. Yeah, I like it. I like the fully loaded Lone Star, too. They got the little riddle. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's crazy because I got. I mean, I can't grill and chill without some cold beer. I know. I mean, we'll have to stock up yeah. just in case. I guess I can work on my boat drinks recipes. I got a Jimmy Buffett blender. I can break out. <laughs> that thing takes up so much room. <laughs> I got Malcolm a Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville fully loaded blender. Yeah. It's nice. I, I it love was, using it, but man, it's so big. It takes up so much room. You got to haul it out. And it makes this huge mess. <laughs> oh, it's great. I love it. <laughs> and by the time Because you, you clean made, it up. I don't clean it up. <laughs> by the time you make one or two, you're done with it. You're like, you know? yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Let's just have a Novel beer. Novelty's over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for some icebergs. I'm gonna bring, use we could, the, yeah. We'll have to use that for icebergs. Yeah. 
I'm about to do a video on that, at least a story or something. So you open- first grilling and chilling. Are we gonna do like an Instagram grilling chilling day? Or- Definitely, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. We've been filming a lot lately, but we haven't been doing our Instagram Saturdays as much. Yeah, it's time to crank them back up. Yeah, so. yeah. Memorial Day would be a good weekend for it. Yeah. Actually, this week, uh, this Saturday is Traeger Day. So anybody that you know wants to celebrate Traeger Day, if you got a Traeger, oh yeah, they're going to be doing a lot of social stuff. So you can follow them. On Saturday, oh, yeah. I think Chad's going to be live on their Instagram a lot. Yeah, I'm Chad sure. Ward, and I'm sure uh, Danielle will be doing a lot of stuff. Heck yeah, she's been. Man, she has been kicking butt. She's been in the on the grill. If y'all it follow seems like twenty four seven on Facebook. She is on it. She's doing all kinds. I've seen her doing lobsters. She's baking. She's grilling. She's doing it all. Like twenty four hours a day. She's it seems like Facebook it. Yeah. Love. I don't know how she's doing it? I mean, she's she's the hardest working yeah, woman at barbecue. Heck yeah. Good for her. So for your grilling and chilling, you also need some dips. You gotta have a good dip. You love talking about dips. I like it. <laughs> I love dips. Heck yeah. No, was it this week you told me you said how many different salads are they? How See now the one it, yeah. you say one and I say wood. <laughs> <laughs> but these are like salads to go with barbecue sides. Yes. It's not like uh no, it's chef not like, salad. Uh-uh. Yeah. It was no. coleslaw, potato yeah. salad, pasta salad, ham salad. All the salad. We named, I think we got up to a couple dozen. When you first said that, I was it kind of annoying me, but I just went along with it. I was busy <laughs> doing something. And by the time it was over, I was having a <laughs> good old time. So you want to do that with dips? <laughs> I'm more of a salad man than a dip man. If you give me pasta salad, potato salad, macaroni, you know, all the salads to go with some barbecue and some yeah. beans, I'm good. You know, I love a good you could, I could do it. I could do a whole cookbook on just nothing but salads that I love. Salads, yeah. And it's they're you know they're the good ones like that come from the church's auxiliary group. Yeah, the stuff that shows up at all the potlucks, you know, in the, in the summertime. Your yes. Memorial Day cook-offs and your Fourth of July, and there's a table full of these. You know, usually the men do the grilling. No, not being biased here, but the women do all the sides. <laughs> yeah. And, by the time that I've been on the grill and cooking all this meat, I'm ready for something different. So I kind of hover to the sides. Yeah. And I'd like to try them all. I mean, that's my thing. I, I mean, Coleslaw, a couple different varieties. Yeah. There's the broccoli salad. Oh, man, that's such a good one. Yeah. But, you know, usually you don't do dips. There's not potluck barbecue dips. I mean, that's something you, you kind of do. I take dips everywhere I go. If I'm I think you just because you like... I don't know why, just because you like the quickness of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves a dip. They're good. I ain't gonna lie. They're always they're always eating and they're always gone because it's a yeah. hover, it's a hover round. Exactly. You don't That's put it do out it. there with the food. You put it on it the goes, counter somewhere, wherever and people, people just, tend to congregate and they just sit there and I don't know, chat. It could be cheese ball. Yeah. It could be any of that stuff. A tort. What's a tort? <laughs> it's basically it's a, a turtle. <laughs> it's like a turtle dip. <laughs> Tort. When I think what of a tort, is? I think it's like a puff pastry with something stuffed up in it or something. T-O-R-T-E. Isn't it? Uh, yeah. Torte. <laughs> Torte. Is that French? No. I don't know, Shell. <laughs> what else do you want to do for grilling and chilling? Uh, wings. Yeah, wings is a great That's one. That's a uh, popular one in yeah. our house. But you know, in the summer, I... We we eat we eat a lot of wings because I, I the wings are my favorite part of chicken. Well, it's so easy but to throw them on and when I think of wings, it's like something I usually don't gravitate to in the summertime because usually it's you know something else. But yeah, because I, I reserve my wing eating for football season. Yeah, and so you know like you're right. This year we are we gonna have football season? Who knows? But when I think of oh it's time to eat wings, I think of watching ball. Yeah, and then in the summer it's usually you know sausages, burgers. Steaks for a steak Hamburgers dinner, for sure. bar- you know, barbecue for the big holidays, but lots of burgers, lots of sausages like brats or hot dogs, you know, hot dogs, even the red skin sausages <laughs> get on the grill, barbecue sauce, or like you know, sausage uh, Italian and cheese sausage, plate. yeah, so- a lot of sa- sausage and cheese plates, yeah, easy eating stuff that does well sitting out that doesn't necessarily have to be that does okay room temp. You say that's I'm, grilling and chilling. I love the dips, but you love a sausage and cheese tray. I, I love a charcuterie board or sausage and cheese board. That's that's if, awesome. if I'm showing up, I expect it to be there, and it better be good. <laughs> that's what I want. 
how hard is it to grill some sausages and put out some cheese with some pickles easy. and, a, and you know, a little bit of dipping sauce and some crackers and some pepperoncinis? Anybody can throw that together. Oh, yeah. And it's great. And it's delicious. It, it always goes gets right ate. beside the dip. goes right with the dip. <laughs> <laughs> People what's just stand around and eat it. We're talking Rotel dip? Because that's, I think, summertime it's, Rotel. Oh, really? Yeah. Rotel's like a hot dip. I'm thinking cold dips, like a Grinch dip or oh. a... I mean, I like a good stuff like that, like French onion dip. French onion dip. The kind we got, I, I'm a fan of those. You just buy them in the grocery store and open them up. So, <laughs> yeah. French onion dip or Ruffles chips. Yeah. Heck yeah. Even a salsa. Salsa. Yeah. Yeah. Like a salsa. I tell you what, get some um, store bought salsa and kick it up with some Grande Gringo. You've been on that kick here lately mm-hmm. since Cinco de Mayo. Before then. Before. It's a good Can't little. get to your Mexican. It's better than the Mexican. Just, just you just like to have something to go with your margarita, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Bottle of tequila, lemon juice, Cointreau, splash of beer, a little simple syrup. Bottle of Gringo, package of chips, and a jar of salsa. You got a fiesta. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I work hard. <laughs> <laughs> in a Zoom, in a Zoom call <laughs> with all your friends. I work very hard. Heck yeah! I need a little fun time. That's right. But no, I'm excited about. I'm not defending I'm, myself. I'm excited about grilling and chilling. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Cause I'm right there with you, girl. Um. So I have corn on the cob. Yeah. I love how you throw your the corn on the cob and and just let it go on the grill yeah. and just and shuck it back when it gets cooked. Yep. It's so easy to get the silt off of and good to go and. You gotta have a. It almost uh, like it steams it in the tub of country crock mm-hmm. right there with it that you just salt. when it's hot outside that that the butter kind of gets melty on its own real easy yeah. and you just take the grilled corn and this ain't one you're gonna reuse this is just the grill <laughs> grill butter <laughs> just, everybody sticks their corn off in it and man it's good <laughs> you never done that <laughs> no Heck yeah what do you use a squeezy bottle with margarine uh I like that's that. easy too for grilling like and chilling lakes. yeah well I mean I don't like spreading. Butter and you know I'm outside. I get you. I get you. Know. you. Gotta have something a little cleaner. Watermelon. You know, you know, I've seen a lot of grilled watermelon. I've never grilled it. They say that it changes texture. And now I read this. I don't know how true it is, but that grilled watermelon is a good substitute for meat. Do you believe that? Mm. I saw it, I saw it on Facebook just the other day. I was like, nope. But mm-hmm. that I've seen a couple. No. You know, I'm so I'm gonna have to try it. I'm gonna have to try that. Would you eat some grilled watermelon? Sure, I'd try it. Yeah. I'm just doubtful that it's better than... Oh, I know it ain't better than meat. But they say the texture burger. of it. You know how watermelon's kind of fibrous? Yeah. They say if you heat it, I guess it breaks down some of those fibers and it changes the texture of it. Yeah. So it kind of goes... I, I mean, I ain't buying it's like meat, but it does. I guarantee it would change the texture of it. So You, you think it gets sweeter? Mm, I don't know. That's a good call. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, you know, apples get super sweet when you grill them. They or do. Peaches get super sweet. They, they're good when you grill them. So Pineapple does, too. Pineapple does, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, fruit salad. Now that it reminds me of meat, though. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> and people say that about mushrooms, too, but it's not the same. Yeah. I uh, mean, it's a, it's okay. But it's not meat. Yeah. yeah. It's not the same. Um, you make a great fruit salad that's perfect for summertime. How do you make yeah. your fruit salad? I cut up, um, well, it's a lot of cutting, a lot of dice. Yeah. You got a lot to dice to do it. But uh, finally, I uh, dice up all about the same size, honey crisp apples, Granny Smith apples, green pears, red pears. Uh, I usually put red grapes and white grapes in there. A couple cans you of mango. you dice your grapes or just throw No, I, like the, I leave the, I, I rinse them and pick them off the, you know, the little mm-hmm. stems or whatever, and put them in. And then I, then I take two cans of mandarin orange. And drain those, uh, not the ones in syrup, the ones in natural juice. And I put those in there. And then I um, I like to cut up fresh pineapple. And the trick to it, a fruit salad will want to turn on you because the apples yeah, and the pears, brown. they want to brown. But if you will uh, either use the pineapple chunks in their own juice or when you cut up your pineapple, if you will save the juice that that's kind of runs out, and then put it in a little bowl, and then as you cut your fruit up, drizzle some of that pineapple juice over it and toss it in it. The quicker you get it mixed with the pineapple, the less it's going to turn at all, and it'll last for a week or so in the refrigerator without turning because of the enzymes in that pineapple. It preserves it. 
And um, I also, you know, I'll do berries with it, but you can't mix the berries with the salad. You have to start, keep them separate. So if you put like blueberries or raspberries or strawberries even, if you mix them in, it's going to turn everything. It's, it's going to dye the color. It's going to make everything mushy. So what I do with my berries is I keep them separate, and then when you serve them in another bowl, so when you get out a bowl, of, a big bowl of fruit salad, you can add the berries to it, and they stay fresh and unique, and you can get the flavors from them. But it's a, it's super simple. It's just cut up fruit. But, man, it's good it because is. it's so fresh. Michael will. But a lot of times I eat it for breakfast, yeah, or if I want a snack, really you know, breakfast. instead of grabbing a bag of chips or something, I'll get me a little bowl of fruit salad and keep that fiber going. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps you regular. <laughs> I like I love fruit salad. That's my. Th- I mean, I cut up a giant bowl of it. And yeah. you know, by the time you put, you I know, mean, two of each apples, a couple of pears, you're gonna sit down and, and you know mow through all those, and then you mix the other stuff with it. I mean, it makes a huge bowl, and you just got to snap on lid, and it goes in the fridge, and it goes a long way. Yeah, I love fruit salad. Um, homemade ice cream. That's a that reminds that's, me. That's yeah. Summertime. That's your specialty. You you told me you're gonna make me some homemade strawberry ice cream soon. So is that happening Memorial Day? Yep. Good. I sure will. It's strawberry season. They're, it is. I mean, they're, they're great. Yeah. We uh we had some this past week. They were really good. I'm excited about that. I don't I don't usually get homemade ice cream very. I mean only in the summer. Yeah. Your grandma makes the, the best I've ever had. It's probably your Her grandma's peach. homemade peach ice cream yeah. that they would do on the fourth. I need to. Get Second best cream. to that is when you made. Salted caramel. That custard, I guess, was what made that so good. But uh, strawberry ice cream is one of my favorites, too. We never had any flavors. It was always homemade ice cream, vanilla. Y'all never it? Vanilla. experimented? Vanilla. Nope. With, never got we always had some type of fruit flavor. Yeah. Never, I never got any of that as a kid. It was always just homemade vanilla. And it was good, but it wasn't, like, special. Lemonade. Oh, when will they bring back the... Blackberry goat cheese at Area 51. Now, if y'all hadn't tried that, there's an ice cream place in Hernando for all of the local people out there. If you come through Hernando, called Area 51. And once a year for about three weeks. Something like that. Whenever blackberries come in, they get local blackberries and local goat cheese, and they make an ice cream with it. And it is unbelievable. It's been- But it usually sells out every day, so you better plan on getting there. It, um... It's All been ranked Facebook. as the best ice cream in the States. So. Really? I believe it. They, they've got another one that I really like, the buttermilk, strawberry buttermilk. Mm-hmm. Man, it's good, too. They got the best cookies and cream, period. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That I've ever had. Area 51 is the bomb. Yeah, they're good. So, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it just got me excited. <laughs> I'm fixing to go check their Facebook page when we get off it's here. It's too early. Is it? I bet you they got the strawberry. I bet you they got the strawberry buttermilk coming. Probably. Cause it's, and they do a peach, too, that's really good. They do. Yeah, very so good. Anything, theirs is always seasonal, depending on what fruit or whatever stuff is eating. Because they source so. it locally. Yeah. That's why it's so good. Man, I'm excited now. Um, Lemonade. I said that. And you got. Homemade lemonade? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I love homemade lemonade. It's a. That's very I actually to me. That does say summer. And um I'd like <laughs> a lot of times I cheat when I do it. I use the packets of Kool-Aid lemonade, oh, yeah. but then use fresh lemons too. Yeah. And then, you know, and that man it makes the best lemonade. It does. That's how my but I wanna try I wanna try a, a char in the lemons and make it a charred lemonade. I might I was actually thinking about making a drink with that, either an adult beverage yeah or either you know showing a version of a lemonade you could kick up because we had when we went to traeger they had um, yeah grilled they wouldn't lemons they did oranges that way they had grilled or smoked the oranges and used it to make a mimosa is that what it was yeah i wanted it with some lemons that sounds i'm thinking about like sugar in them and then Uh grilling them so it kind of caramelizes a little bit or smoking them or something and then squeezing them yeah i think it'd be good heck yeah I like that idea. That would, see, that's a recipe that we could do that's meatless. I've got that. I've got a planter's punch that I want to share. Mm-hmm. It's kind of my take on when I get to Jamaica, the first drink they usually hit me with at the resort. <laughs> I've I've mastered it. <laughs> I, I've done it. Uh, and so, it, I mean, it ain't nothing secret. It's a, it's a recipe that's out there. I just mixed it up my way, kind of. But it's so good, and it'll remind you of the Caribbean. It does. It smells like... Yeah. Right before you drink it, you yeah. get a whiff of it, and you're like, oh. it's the pine. It's a combination of the, I guess, the pineapple and the orange and all the juices that's in it. Yeah. 
So drink, that's something else we could do. If we don't, if we run out of meat, we can just make a bunch of drinks. <laughs> yeah. We got to get through this. <laughs> Come booze with that. <laughs> how, to bo- how to booze, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I was going to ask you what your perfect grilling and chilling day looked like, but you kind of already. That's it, man. Yeah. I, ran it down. I start early. <laughs> you finish. do. You start early. You finish early. <laughs> well, no, you know, usually by sundown, I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready to check out and go to bed. You ready to sit in your recliner That's, and drink you know, a glass of water? And I don't know if it's just bed. me, but when I go to the beach, if I'm chilling out in the summer, I like to get up and go do what I'm going to do and have yeah. fun. And then by nighttime, I'm spent. Yeah. I'm ready to lay down, go to sleep and get up, do it again the next day and just rinse, repeat. You know, you know, stay in, stay is. in the trunks, stay in the trunks all day. It ain't called getting old. It's called, <laughs> it's called enjoying myself. <laughs> I mean, in my younger days, I would stay up all, you know, all day and all night. But I, mean, hey, who, that takes I can't a do that anymore. Long. You gotta, you gotta rest and drink water and hydrate while you do. All you, do. you have fun in the summer. You do. <clears throat> so this weekend, we're fixing to leave from here. Go cook a whole hog. Cook a hog. It's going to take us probably 24 Ooh. hours. So it'll take tonight. We're going to try to get it on by this afternoon. We'll cook it all night. And record. Get it done tomorrow and record. And then we don't have anything planned for Saturday and Sunday. So we're going to relax. Yeah. And then we'll be right back at it. Yep. Do some delicious dinners next week. Yeah. I've got. Yeah. Yeah. I probably won't do have, have any... to do. Uh, we've already got. I don't know. No. I mean. Yeah. So I don't know. It might. We're, we're, we're going to look good on video, so we'll just do some dinners and <clears throat> yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. Try to... Um, we'll do some live broadcast from if we go to the store and show people what they <laughs> <laughs> Like it's a scavenger hunt? Yeah. Well, what? that's all I got today, man. Well, hey, we appreciate everybody hanging out with us, and y'all can find us where... If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and Twitter. Well, we appreciate y'all hanging out um, for a crazy hour with us. <laughs> <laughs> it got a little crazy. Today. We will uh, do it again next week. <laughs> See y'all.